Hello, baby queers, and welcome back to my channel. It is time for some nerd advice on TikTok, because we haven't done them in a while, I think. But you know the drill, before we get started, go grab something to drink, grab some water or some tea, and then we'll get started. Are you hydrated? Good, let's go. All right, genius, I give you permission to make our drill ship fast. I'm not touching that thing, I'll get neurotypical cooties. I have <laughs> Neurotypical cooties. That is fair. Because the thing is, we know there is like a huge overlap of queer people and neurodivergent people. But it's still true that all queer people can't sit, even if they're not neurodivergent, but still. Why would we sit normally? That doesn't work. <laughs> Remembering is for neurotypicals. Come on, but it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because even if you do carry a notebook around, or you just have your phone on you and you just open the notes and you sit there like, fuck, every time. Maybe not every time. Sometimes you do actually remember, but it just happens so often that you don't. That is kind of funny if you put it like this, but it's still kind of frustrating. fidgeting one I would constantly like I would usually just shake my leg but then I still couldn't concentrate I also had to be doing something with my hands or like would line up things on my desk so they would be like even and kind of like fit you know like I couldn't just place the book randomly like this on the table it had to be like in the corner and straight all the time and people looked at me really weird for it Oh well. Constantly. Like little things like that, and it just kind of adds up. And the sensory overload, don't get me started. My god. Headphones were literally my best friend. Some days I really didn't even want to take them off, even during class, but well, obviously I had to. <laughs> I just learned something and I'm not going to be at the same ever again. Neurodivergence, please fasten your seatbelt. I know you got a short attention span. I will try to make this quick as I possibly can. I saw a TikTok where it was like this therapist trying to ease the symptoms of ADHD and they go, hey, did you know that neurodivergence would have been hunters instead of gatherers and like picking berries and shit? And she was like, huh, weird. I don't feel like a hunter. Yeah, you don't feel like one, but wait. She proceeded to show her shooting a gun for the first time and the like practice thing. She hit right in the middle every single time. Which is really funny because I remember the first time I ever went like with my father anywhere. Of course, we went shooting, <laughs> uh, but I remember shooting and like it was pretty far. And I hit a headshot, and he was like, <laughs> "And actually, cry that was for dramatic effect." Think about it. We don't know that we're hungry until we're starving. The ignoring of your senses, the disassociation and hyperfocusness, the being able to sense things better, like smell and sound and sight. Those are all things hunters would need. Why do we still have them? I, I, <laughs> the list goes on. The high pain tolerance. The, like, not knowing your own strength until you snap. The huge sense of justice. Like... <laughs> it all makes sense. It all makes sense. It all makes perfect sense. And honestly... Like, a lot of neurodivergent traits themselves aren't inherently bad, no matter what neurotypicals might say about them. But just... In the world we live in, they're, they're oftentimes just quite useless now. 
but it does actually make a lot of sense. I don't know how good I would be at, like, shooting a gun. The only gun, because I'm not American, come on, I've ever shot was in laser tag. But laser tag, for me, was so overwhelming with all the lights blinking and flashing and then all the smoke. And I was so overwhelmed by that that I couldn't even focus to really shoot anything. So, not sure that counts. <laughs> hey, you remember how you didn't like wearing pantyhose? Yeah, that was the autism. Hey, do you remember how you really loved that one cookie, but then it crunched weirdly in your mouth, and then you were disgusted by it for, like, five years? Yeah, I still don't eat it. That was the autism. Hey, hey! You remember how, like, all throughout elementary school and, like, a little bit of middle school, and honestly, throughout your entire life, and still now to this day, you, you, you find comfort through smell and soft stuff, and you, you put the sleeve of your jacket to your nose whenever you feel stressed? Yeah, why are you bringing this up? We've been over this. Once you know, a lot of things just suddenly make sense. Because then you know, oh wait, the thing I was doing, because it really calms me down, was actually stimming. Hmm. Go figure. <laughs> but literally, pantyhose are freaking evil. They're evil. They just feel so weird. Okay? They just feel weird. Put a finger down, neurotypical version. Neurotypical. Put a finger down if you can enter a supermarket without a list and not get overwhelmed. <clears throat> Put a finger down if you can start making small talk and keep it going for longer than five minutes. Put a finger down if you wake up every morning without the insistent voices in your head. Put a finger down if you can try new foods, be fine with it and not critique the texture. Put a finger down if you can take an interest in something without losing time, nourishment and sleep. Put a finger down if you change plans last minute and then carry on with your day like nothing's changed. Put a finger down if you don't mind people unexpectedly turning up at your front door. Put a finger down if you can focus on someone talking without zoning out or daydreaming. Put a finger down if you can sit still for 10 minutes without fidgeting. Lastly, put a finger down if you can give easy eye contact without having to analyze if you're doing it right. Okay, the only one I put down is for changing plans and then being able to move on. If I change plans last minute, because in the moment it feels right to me, then it's fine. But God forbid anyone else changes plans. I'm gonna be so frustrated. Yo, it has come to my attention that stimming while you're listening to music is not normal. Or I didn't know what I was doing with stimming. I just thought, like, when you listen to music, you know, you got a vibe. I thought it was vibing. But kid you not, yesterday I was, I was at work. And my coworker that I don't really talk to that much, she was like, but watching you listen to music is so funny. I was like, why? Like, what's, what's going on? She was like, she was like, for a week straight, you was up in your car listening to music like this. <laughs> like, yeah, I was vibing. No. No, that's called stimming. I know what stimming is. I do it all the time. But damn, bruh. I can't do nothing. <laughs> can't do nothing without these neurotypicals thinking it's weird or quirky, actually, yeah. Because honestly, I used to suppress it. Like, when I was, like, on the bus as a kid with other people or something, and I was, like, listening to music over my headphones or, like, in school, I would kind of try to suppress it. But now I just don't give a shit. I'm just singing in my car, I'm just vibing, or stimming, whatever you want to call it in that instance, actually, but... Yeah, I don't... <laughs> how do you just sit music and sit there, uh, like, how do you listen to music and just sit there, like... Yeah, this is nice. What in the neurotypical? My god. <laughs> I'm overstimulated. Why? Loud. Fine. Okay, so all the music is turned down to a bare minimum. Blast it. What? 
death metal, blast it. But stimulation to make brain go purr, fine. Okay, so my friend is going through a really hard time. She just failed in class. Great, no empathy, but she's sad. Can't empathize, sorry. I guess I can be there for her without empathy. That's fine. I mean, my other friend lost a snail, so. Snailer Swift died? Yes. Give them all the empathy. But not the friend that just failed a very important class. Snailer Swift is more important. Okay, I'm really overwhelmed, so I need somebody to hug me. No touch. No touchy. But my love language is physical touch. Yeah, so have them touch us without touching us. It's that simple. Wait a second. What? Oh my god. This whole time. It's been you. You've really been... <laughs> Meow. This whole time, my brain has been run by a cat. Yeah, that's what all autism is, genius. Now go get me a stim toy to play with. I'm bored. Actually, I think we've been over this before. Because, I mean, I love cats for it, but they're very, like, specific about touch, and they will very clearly show you when they don't like being touched. It just, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, so, um, do your cats have names? <laughs> I've seen a lot of autistic people talk about how um, when they have a plate of food, they eat one item at a time, um, saving the best for last, obviously, you know, eat the green beans first and then the and the roast beef and then the mashed potatoes um i am not like that i cannot the way i eat my food is i keep the ratio the same for example if the plate i prepared for myself with the portions that i want uh was one quarter green beans one quarter roast beef and one half mashed potatoes i would eat like two bites of green beans two bites of roast beef and then four bites of mashed potatoes so the ratio stays the same Sometimes I might get a little crazy and have four bites of green beans and then two of roast beef, four of mashed potatoes, two of roast beef, four of mashed potatoes. But in essence, I'm keeping it even. And then, of course, obviously, I'm saving a bite of mashed potatoes for last because that's the best. The best bite for last. Any other, any other autistics eat their dinner like that? Honestly, this is the first I'm hearing of this. But it also makes a lot of sense. It actually makes a lot of sense. I don't know, like, I don't eat, like, I eat things separately, but I don't necessarily finish one thing first and then eat the other. But I don't know if I pay attention to the ratio that much either. But then again, my ADHDs would probably forget. Anyways. <laughs> It's the trauma or the autism, but my starter response is fucked. I have two options. Number one, hey, man. Jesus, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Christ. And number two, oh, that's it. There's no in between. Yeah, same. I scare, like, I don't scare, but like jump scares or something. Like, I know it's gonna happen, but I still flinch super hard sometimes. And people can make fun of me for it because, like, you know it's gonna happen. You just know it, but you still flinch. Or when people talk to you, because you're not really expecting it, you're just sitting there. Or like doors opening. Like if I'm sitting anywhere like close to the door and then it suddenly opens. It doesn't even have to be that loud, but I still can like I can still hear it. But then sometimes when something actually dramatic or dangerous happens, I'm just like, hmm. That was weird. Why? Why? Signs of neurodivergence. You lose things 75% more often than your peers. You repeat words or noises or accents frequently. You got really, really good grades even though you worked half as hard as everybody else, or you got really, really bad grades even though you worked twice as hard as everybody else. You're constantly apologizing for forgetting, but you actually didn't forget. You knew the thing was coming, you watched the thing pass you by, and you are powerless to do anything about the thing at all. Now remember, most people experience some of these things, but neurodivergent people experience them very, very often. It's kind of the thing, like I heard someone reply to this, because some people, like about the forgetting things, you know, like, no, actually, especially about that one, people are like, well, we all forget things sometimes, right? Like we all walk into rooms and forget what we were doing. And someone just replied with, yeah, Karen, we all pee too, though, but if you do it 60 times a day, it's probably an issue. 
and I'm pretty sure they have a point because at some point it's not just I don't know maybe you're just kind of stressed or haven't slept too much and that's why you're just kind of more forgetful and then you do walk into rooms without remembering what you're doing there but if you're neurodivergent or especially if you have ADHD probably you're gonna forget it so much more often that it is noticeable you know hey could i turn the music up yeah go for it <laughs> could i turn the music up some more uh sure okay what is up with that and i knew you were gonna ask uh well essentially certain numbers don't like hit right and the ones that do are even numbers or like fives and tens so uh why i would also love to know that answer but i i don't know okay so if i did this that would be bad oh no i'll just never drive you anywhere again miss too anxious to get driver's license and she has a point okay deal could you please turn it back down to 20 what are you doing but yeah, the whole, oh yeah, this thing just doesn't hit right. It's kind of true for so many things. Like, so many things just don't feel right. And maybe you could force yourself to endure it. But A, doing that constantly, well, I mean, doing it at all, but especially doing it, like, constantly to mask or whatever because you're just, like, pretending to be normal is so energy consuming that really you don't want to do it just just turn it like just turn it to even numbers come on with that walk though i mean neurovergent people or especially autistic people especially especially do walk differently apparently like it's quite common but what was that walk <laughs> but anyways yeah like honestly there's still like this huge overlap between like introverts when it comes to stuff like this because introverts will also like come up with ways to like win arguments or have fake conversations and do weird dances at home or whatever. But still, I think that's just why I thought I was introverted. Like back when I was in school, I always thought I was introverted because there were like so many things that I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just like, I get really drained around people. Like I need a lot of time to recharge. Uh, like, I'm not that talkative with other people. As if I don't constantly go around mirroring other people as a way of masking because I don't know how to act around people. And I even noticed I was doing it in preschool. Like, I knew I was just, like, mirroring back traits of people around me. Or just, like, picking someone I thought was really cool and kind of, like, more mirroring them. And I was like, no, that's just... That's just normal. Well, well, it is for neurodivergent people. Oh well. <laughs> you get that dinosaur the cute little squishy thing that lights up when you throw it on the table my god it's cute i want it it's so adorable and the unicorn nightlight it's also just cute but the lifesaver like earmuffs actually very cool <laughs> like you used to not be able to wear like outer ear headphones because they would feel weird 
but now I can't get enough of them because most of the time they're better at noise cancelling, so that's worth it, actually, to kind of get used to the feeling around my ears. But honestly, like, there are things that just make sense to, like, neurodivergent people that neurotypicals might not even notice. Like, the nightlight or something, people might not even clock, really, as neurodivergent. Because some of these things, like, neurotypicals do them too. But if you neurodivergent, it just makes so much more sense somehow. <laughs> Well, that's ruined my day. Oh, the way I can feel it on my hand, even if I didn't touch it. Like, especially imagining it's like a wet, like this, these kind of, that's not really even froth. I don't even know what the texture is. But then like, especially if it's wet. No, no, my God. <laughs> You can just them in like so many different ways and especially like playing with your hands or something like I don't know it's just it's so easy because you always have your hands with you right like stim toys and fidget toys love them but they better not make noises I can't stand it actually but I never remember to carry them right and then hands is just easier Or like playing around with your jewelry, like if you wear rings or like necklaces. I used to, like I wouldn't get in trouble, but like people told me to stop like in meetings when I was like playing around with my necklace. Because it made the smallest noise, but it wasn't like a bad noise to me, so I didn't even really notice it. But the people next to me did. And they were like, can you like please stop? And I was like, sorry, and just went back to playing with my hands or something. <laughs> Because otherwise, no focus. Sorry. <laughs> How I feel about certain design choices with little to no explanation. Yes. Yes. Absolutely not. For me, this one's 50-50. 100% no. Yes, and I don't care that it's impractical. I hate these. I think I might hate this even more. Yes, of course. No. Yes, I've grown really fond of this. Surprisingly, I actually like this. Yeah, I feel like most of these just make absolute sense. Especially as someone who doesn't wear socks most of the time. Um, especially like rugs are so difficult because like if I walk somewhere, I don't want to walk on different textures in one room, right? Like, if I walk into another room and there's, like, a different flooring, that's kind of fine. But if there's suddenly, like, a rug and I have to walk over it, I hate it. I don't know why. I just hate it so much. There was also some discussion in the TikTok comments uh, about whether the big spoon is good or the little spoon is good. Because for some autistic people, the big spoon feels better. I don't really get it. It has to be a specific spoon, actually. Like, I don't buy it with certain spoons. We've been over this, but I kind of get it. <laughs> Here are some things I thought everyone did until I realized it was actually neurodivergent traits. Part one, not being able to sit still. Like, and I don't just mean like fidgeting around like this. I mean, tapping my foot, clicking my fingers, twiddling with rings that I'm wearing, twirling my hair. I just thought all these things were normal until you put them together and you realize actually it's stimming. So stimming is something that typically autistic, but also some ADHD people do to self-regulate. So if they are feeling overwhelmed or there's too much going on, or if they're even feeling, if they have ADHD and they're feeling understimulated, they might stim, they might fidget, all of these sort of things. So 
number one. Number two, I thought everyone always had thoughts, like a thousand million thoughts all the time. I didn't realize that's not normal. I remember from a very young age thinking, I wish I could just like switch my brain off. Like I wish there was an off switch, especially at night when you're trying to sleep. And I honestly don't know what it's like to have a quiet brain. Number three is being very specific with certain things. For example, I can only have a cup of tea out of a certain mug. The top has to be thin. Do not give me a thick top of a mug to drink tea out of. Disgusting. It's the same with cutlery for me, glasses. It has to be a specific thing depending on what I'm eating or drinking. It has to be the correct utensil. And the next thing is taking what people say very literally. And I didn't actually realize that I did this until it was pointed out to me. So a friend asked me, oh, when you're on holiday, did you have a drink? And in my head, I was like, well, obviously, like, I have to drink water or I'll die. Like, of course I had a drink. And she must have seen that I was, like, confused and processing this because she was like, I mean, of alcohol. And the reason she asked is because I don't drink, but I was at a wedding. So she was just simply asking if I had a drink at the wedding because it was a special occasion. But my neurodivergent ass was like, this, this is a dumb question. <laughs> of course I like had a drink. You have to drink water to survive. And that's not something that neurotypical people get confused about. They don't take things so literally. Like for part two. Yeah. Like when I started realizing, because like imposter system, right? When I started realizing, uh, I might be neurodivergent. Um, <laughs> there were like things, because I'd relate to like 10 traits. Because I'm like, yes, no, I do this. Like, doesn't everyone do this? But then there'd be that one trait, like taking things that literally. That was like, no, I don't think I do this. I must be faking it. We love the imposter system. But anyways, I'm not so sure anymore I don't do it because it just takes me too long. Like if someone would ask me this, I'd just be like, yeah, of course, what are you doing? But then in my head I'd be like, oh wait, they mean alcohol. And it just takes me so long to process it because most people would be like, yeah, no, I, I just drank water. Like if they don't drink alcohol, they would just be like, oh no, I just had a Coke or something. Like it's an immediate response. And I just said that like, but what do they mean? Because it's kind of frustrating how people quite often don't say exactly what they mean. Which is also why there are divergent people tend to like over explain in a way because they want to make sure they're getting their exact point across. And her typicals don't, and it kind of can lead to some confusing situations. <laughs> I just realized something. I had a bad childhood. Yeah, I know. What do you mean, you know? Look at you. What do you mean, look at me? Look at how you stand. People who had good childhoods don't stand like that. Oh, the good old T-Rex arms. But yeah, standing like that, or like, standing on the outside of your feet or the inside of your feet, there's apparently something neurotypical, neurotypical people don't do a lot. And they also don't like keep rocking back and forth unless they're like really nervous about something, right? They might do it when they're about to give a presentation or they're giving a presentation. They're probably not gonna stand still and they're gonna like fidget with stuff. But they only do it when they're nervous. Because in that moment, their brain needs the stimulation too, to kind of keep yourself grounded a little bit. No, 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 diversion people just kind of need it so much more regularly. Wait, I thought you were allergic to peaches. Well, I think I might be, but I keep going back and forth. What do you mean? Well, a lot of other people's allergies are a lot worse than mine, and I haven't been officially diagnosed. Uh, what happens when you eat peaches? My chest and my neck break out in hives and my throat gets really itchy. But you don't think you're allergic? Well, I haven't been to an allergist to confirm it. Don't you think you should accommodate yourself and not eat peaches, whether a doctor has told you you're allergic or not? That just feels really performative. Yeah, it's kind of obvious if you put it like that. Because that's the thing. If 
we gatekeep and be like, okay, now only like an official like doctors or psychologists, whatever diagnosis is valid. I mean, A, we hate gatekeeping in general. We've been over this. But listen, if you do that, there are going to be so ner- so many neurodivergent people who can't afford it or who keep like getting stuck in waiting lists. And honestly, like going to doctor's appointments and everyone and everything for neurodivergent people is already hard enough. And it's not accessible to everyone. And then you have people who don't get diagnosed and just keep struggling. Whereas even with self-diagnosis, so what if a few neurotypicals actually like question it and actually think they might be? Sure, it's not like great, but honestly, if they think they might be neurodivergent and start like making changes to their lives to make their lives work better for them, it's still a win. But I don't even think it happens that often. Because with how much stigma there is around neurodivergence and how much you get judged for it, I don't think anyone's gonna be out here and not think about it so long that they are actually neurodivergent, right? Because even neurotypical, at some point you just realize that no, no, there are just like too many things that don't add up. But anyways, yes. And also if you're allergic, don't eat it. My god, what are you doing? But lactose intolerant people are next level of this. They just they just don't give a shit. My god, what is that? <laughs> If you're right-brained, you'll see a fish. If you're left-brained, you'll see a mermaid. If you have a neurodivergent brain, you're going to see the donkey from Shrek. Have a good day. It's so funny. My first thought was like, wait, that's a donkey. I don't even- wait. A mermaid? Where is- I mean, I can kind of see fish. I was actually thinking- Seal, no wait, that's a donkey. But mermaid? I... No. No, you're lying. of the thing that I keep saying is why would you judge from someone for it? Because all of these things, which is what they mean, it's just that they're not inherently harmful. Like, I hate the tips of like, oh, don't be on your phone or don't watch stuff when you're eating. I literally cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I mean, I, I've always preferred eating alone. Literally. I'm actually kind of glad if, like, no one else is at work that I like having lunch with because they don't do it at the same time or something. Because then I just get to sit there, eat on my own, and, like, listen to music over my headphones to kind of be able to ground myself again. I really like it. Because other people make chewing noises. And we don't like it. But listen, if it's not harmful to the person, I mean, even if it's harmful, don't judge them. Like, try to find them by the ways to do it. But none of these things are harmful. And I don't get why people judge them for it. But literally, <laughs> this is just one of the things that just also makes more sense if you are actually neurodivergent. Because like a lot of introverts or something might prefer eating alone too, but it just kind of hits different, I think. Because the level of discomfort you feel if you don't get to do things the way they feel right for you. It's just so high that it's not actually worth it. You know? <laughs> Anyways, this was a really long one. But uh, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not gonna shorten it. I hope you enjoyed the TikToks. I hope you had fun. I hope you're hydrated now. If you're not, go drink some more now. And I will be back in three days with my next video.